Nice and hard. That's good. Uh, PVA, water soluble. So this is how we clean it off. Warm water. <laughs> Now that we've got all the PVA washed off, now we're gonna start sanding. Now, for the most part, a lot of people seem to think that you know, sanding is sanding, and you know, to an extent it is, but there are some, some subtle tricks that will make it go a lot smoother and you know, uh, a, a lot better. When I'm looking at a, at, at, a, at a patch that I just laid up, first thing I'll do is I'll taper off all of my edges. I won't even touch this, this center area but I'll just go ahead and feather off all of my areas. Now when I'm doing that, I'm going to be sanding in one direction. You know, so I'm going to start sanding up on the, the area that we just laid up and sanding off into, this, into the, uh, the existing area. You know, here is kind of the, the, bottom, the bottom line of what we laid up. So I'm going to start up in here and I'm just going to sand it down this way. I'm not going to make any strokes this way. You know, by, if I do this, what's going to happen is when, when you get it finally tapered down to a fine point, it's going to want to lift that little lip and you'll just end up peeling it further back and back and back and you won't ever really get it to that perfect, you know, ramp <laughs> blending into your existing area. And then once I've got that completely feathered off with the 400 grit, then I'll switch, you know, then I'll put it on top of a block and I'll start working the, the main body of the patch. And I won't touch these edges again until we start going through the, the finer grits of our paper. So, uh, sanding, you get, a lot more, you get a lot more distance out of your sandpaper if you use some, some soapy water. You know, I, typically I use, I think it's Dawn dish soap. And I'll put, I don't know, maybe a teaspoon in for a gallon of water. I mean, I, I don't measure it. I fill this up and I throw a little squirt and I shake it <laughs> and that's what I do. But the soap, uh, provides a little bit of lube for the, uh, for the paper and it keeps the, uh, the, the, the sanding residue from clogging up your paper. So you actually get more distance out of your, uh, out of your sandpaper. You know, this is our transition right here and I'm not, I'm not going to stay in one area very long. I'm going to just keep going back and forth along the bottom until it's uh, tapered off. You know, and it's not a bad idea to kind of change directions, you know, saying it this way and then this way. You know, it all depends. And this 400 grit is going to take this material off pretty quick. So you got you to gotta pay attention when you're sanding. One other thing I should mention is you, when, you're, uh, when you're putting the water on here, it's really nice to have it in a spray bottle. You know, I, I see a lot of people, they, you know, they just take a bucket of water and they keep dipping their, uh, you know, their sandpaper in and out to clean it off. If you have any sand, if that bucket isn't completely clean, if you got little you know, particles of sand you know, that maybe blew in there or the bucket just wasn't completely clean, you're going to pick up those sand particles on your paper and now you're going to be putting some pretty deep scratches into, the, into your gel coat. If you have it in a spray bottle, the, the water is always clean. You, don't, you just don't have to worry about it. So it's just kind of a nice little, you know, a nice little way to do it. Serious? <laughs> All the edges are tapered off now. Now, I, I, I will mention that when you're doing this part of, the, part of the process, your fingers will tell you a lot more than your eyes will on um, whether you've got the edges tapered off. Uh, you know, because looking at this, I mean, there's sanding residue and, and just kind of stuff all, all over on here. You, you, won't, you can't see it, but yet if you, you know, run your fingers over it, you will feel every little blemish or imperfection that's on there. So your hands, a lot more accurate than your eyes at, the, at this stage of the game. So uh, everything's tapered off, so now I'm going to be switching over to a block. And really any, anything would work. I mean, I, you know, they make these sanding blocks that you can take and pinch the paper in here. Uh, but, you know, a piece of wood works actually in a lot of cases when you're working out on a, on a dock. A piece of wood actually works better because if you drop one of these things in the water, right down to the bottom, <laughs> they don't float. <laughs> but a piece of wood 
does. But with the edges tapered off now, now we're looking to kind of flatten the body of it, or you know, the middle section of, the, of our patch. So that's, uh, that's the next step. You gotta evenly work the entire patch. You can't just work one area and not the rest, because you'll, you'll sand through. We're still using the 400 grit paper, and uh, you know, just go on it. You know, I, I, I sand in a pattern. So I'll go side to side, you know, and then I'll top to bottom. And this, I, I, I put the block down and I leave it down. So now that I've gotten all the edges tapered off and the, the main body of this patch flat with using the block and the 400 grit, now I'm going to start working through the finer grit papers. And when I do that, I, I tend to you know, kind of set the block aside and do the, uh, the fine tuning by hand. So I'll go 600 grit, 800 grit, 1200, and then 1500, and then I'll polish it out. Gone through all the grits. I was gonna wipe all, <laughs> all this residue off. Now with all the sanding done, now it's time. Now it's time for the fun part. We got to buff it out. I like to use a wool bonnet. You know, not not a foam pad. Uh, a good, you know, fairly aggressive wool bonnet for gel coats. You know, I I don't use that on paints, but on gel coat because it's such a hard material, you kind of need. Uh, a buffing pad with a little bit of bite to it. So the, the, the compound that I use, it's, it's kind of a, it's got some grit to it. It's not a polish, it's not a wax. When you, when you get a little bit of this stuff on your hands, uh, you can feel, you, you can feel, it, it, it's, it's fine, it's a fine grit, but you can feel the, a little bit of grit uh, as you're rubbing it between your fingers. It, it starts out somewhat coarse, and then as you work it, the, uh, the grit breaks down, and it gets finer and finer and finer, and eventually it just kind of turns into a polish. But to start off, you want a little bit of that grit to, you know, to, to I guess, burn down or remove the, the, the 1500 grit scratches from when we were sanding this. So I'm going to take, uh, take some of the compound, I'm going to wet it around the, the outside perimeter of the buffing pad, and then I'm going to run this buffer pretty much flat. I'm not going to put it up on edge too much. You know, a little bit, but not much. Um, on a slow speed. I want to let the compound do the work. I don't want to have to rely on the speed of the buffer to, you know, to, to remove these scratches. You know, let the compound do what it's designed to do. And if you need to go over it a second time or a third time before all the scratches are out, you know, no big deal. One of the possibilities of, of what could happen if you run the buffer at a high speed is you get heat buildup and you could actually burn your gel coat. So another reason why I like to run this on a slow speed because then I don't have to worry about how long I, I keep the pad in a particular spot. You know, I'll run a, you know, a little bead around here kind of like this, you know, just around the outside edge. And then rather than putting the pad down and turning this on uh, and having this compound just get slung all over the place, I'll take my hand and just kind of rub it into the, into the, uh, the bonnet here. That way when you turn it on, nothing, you don't have any slinging of this compound going on. Here we go. And just like that, we're done. It looks lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it looks good, I'm happy with it. And kind of the big kicker is, is that the, the gel coat that we matched isn't 100% dead on. It, it isn't. Um, but you know, looking at here, the reason you can't see it is because of the blending. And again, that's just to emphasize and drive home you know, a point that I tried to make a couple of video go videos ago is that you, know, you don't get hung up on the color matching process you know, to the point where you, you just don't feel that it, you, you can do it. Uh, it's ridiculous. A anybody can do this. It just it takes a little bit of learning, a little bit of trial and error, and, and you can do it. And you can do it and have it look great. Um, again, you know, you try this on your boat. You can, at the end of the day, you can sit back, mix up a nice little cocktail, and, and know that you just saved yourself a few hundred bucks. <laughs> and it wasn't difficult. So 
I, I hope you enjoyed the video series and again this was the last video of this entire series. I think there was like seven or eight videos total. I'll include a link to that entire playlist right here. And uh, uh, let's see what else. Oh, I got you know all the other stuff. I am going to be starting up the, uh, the first video for the, my Q&A channel, the uh, BWT Dockside. So if you haven't already, go, go to my Facebook page and uh, like the page because I'm going to be putting out a, uh, a post within the next, probably within the next week, asking you guys for your questions so that I, I know <laughs> what questions to answer. It can, be, it can be about anything. It can be about this video series. It can be something completely off topic. I, I really don't care. Um, but if you have any questions that you want to ask, just you know, post them on there and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, rifle through the list as, as best we can. Um, oh, I am, just to emphasize, I am going to have a large write-up on my webpage, probably within a, a couple of days. It's going to take me a while to write it and I want to get this video out. So I'm going to get the video pushed out uh, so that you guys can watch it and then it's probably going to take me a day or two to get the write-up actually over to my website. So, you know, check it out. I kind of feel like crap. I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for watching. I, I, again, I hope you enjoyed the videos. And give me a thumbs up, or two thumbs up. I think you can only give me one, and hopefully it's the thumb and not the finger. <laughs> anyways, I'm going to bed. Have a great night, and we will see you again very soon. Take care. This has been a Bootworks Today Protection.